Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to special OAA Now football preview show. This is the white edition. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Lastly Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminas on Oriental Radio Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud. This week, we are going to preview the OAA White, which features two, sta two state champions in this division. Last two weeks ago, we previewed the gold division. Last week, we previewed the blue. Next week, we're going to preview the red. So without further ado, let's introduce the um, OA gold, the white division here. So let's start off with the Falcons of Beverly Hills, Wiley Groves. When you look at the Falcons this year, um, last season, they had a great year. I mean, like they had a lot of experience coming back. They had, but they ran in the sea home. They played them twice and lost in the playoffs as well. So here is Groves coach, um, Brendan Flaherty at the podium talking about the Falcons. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank Rochester High School, Coach Vernon for putting this together. This is an arduous task, uh, getting the whole thing going. So we really appreciate hosting and it's a cool event for all of us, especially for the young people in the room. I want to thank the media. I think you guys make you know high school sports great. I'm looking at some men who have been here for a long time and it's just that you know the, the league and high school sports in Michigan has really grown and I'm looking at some icons in front of me. I appreciate the younger version and then the older version of the guys. So I really appreciate you making high school sports uh, relevant and uh, it makes an experience better for us. And as we go forward in football, I mean, you, know, you think about high school football is probably that last bastion of like, this is pure football. You know, with all the other stuff going on, high school football is the best. Um, I'm going to turn it over, let my guys introduce themselves. I got my senior, six seniors with me. Let them introduce themselves, and I'll say a couple words. We'll get out of here. Noah Sanders, senior, running back. Nick Hardy, senior receiver. Avery Gatch, offensive lineman, defensive lineman. Noah Woods, senior, tight end, the end. Ryan Counts, senior, quarterback. We've got 20 total seniors coming back this year. Uh, a number of them played for three years for us. A couple of guys played four years. We're really excited about this year. I want to wish everybody the best of luck, except when you play us. I definitely want to wish everybody stay healthy each week. And again, Coach Vernon, thanks. And again, thanks, media. Good luck, guys. When you look at the Falcons, a lot of experience on that roster at Media Day. Um, of course, um, there are questions at quarterback. Obviously, they're going to go with Ryan Counts at quarterback. So. I did catch up with Coach Flaherty to talk about the Falcons and their expectations heading into the year. I got the coach of Beverly Hills Wiley Groves, Coach Brennan Flaherty here. Coach, um, last season you had a lot of success. Um, unfortunately, it didn't go in the playoffs. You ran, fell a very good sea home team. Um, recap last year for me. Uh, great year, you know, two, we played two state champions on a regular season schedule, so challenging. Obviously, that's the OAA, especially OAA White is pretty tough. Uh, but, you know, for us, it always comes down to we got to get past our rival to move on in the playoffs. It's a tough district. So, you know, see who had our number, and they got us. Talk about your quarterback situation. Obviously, I mean, Ryan, talk about Ryan. We talked Ryan a lot on the podcast. Um, how has that been going for you? Uh, he's been doing a great job. You know, Ryan's you know, been in our youth program, Birmingham Patriots, and, you know, grown each year. And just he's steady at it, man. It's moved the chains counts is what we call him, and he's uh, – He's poised to have a great year. What are your expectations here, Coach? Our expectation is, you know, we just got to concentrate and get a little better each week and try to take care of our cross-town rival, and then hopefully after that, make our way down to Ford Field. Thank you really much, Coach. Thanks. When you look at Groves this year, people look at – I do have a podcast – the podcast with Coach Blender Flaherty. I will post it up on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. So when you look at Groves' schedule, you really look at it, it's brutal to start the year. I mean, they open up the year with UD Jesuit on the road. That's not going to be an easy matchup, obviously, when you look at the Cubs. Obviously, most likely they're going to have Brady Collins starting at quarterback. Of course, he transferred out of Corkston. So this will be a really interesting matchup to see. It'll be a good test for Groves, taking on a very good UD Jesuit team um, who was very loaded last year, and they were a good team. So it's going to be a tall order for Groves in that matchup, taking on a – a uh, UAD Jesuit team has got a new coaching staff, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Week two, they host West Bloomfield. It's a rematch of last year's um, West Bloomfield blow, blowout in Beverly Hills, and I think that was a um, 
that was like created a lot of shock waves, especially when you look at what Groves and had um, last year. Um, obviously, with them, I mentioned having to replace the quarterback with them, Caden Hardy no longer there. Um, West Bloomfield, different team, but they still got a lot of proven talent on that team. Um, so it'd be a tall order for Groves in that matchup against West Bloomfield on their home field. Week three, they take on Stony Creek, and it'll be another interesting matchup. The battle in the trenches between Spencer Beekman and Avery Gah, that's gonna be a really interesting battle up front. Um, I think it's gonna come down to is whose passing game will win that game there. I think it'll be really interesting to see how um, that matchup goes between Groves and Stony Creek. Um, week four, they go to Rochester to take on the Falcons. I mean, this is the, you know, this is an interesting match. I mean, Groves last year, just devoured Rochester in Beverly Hills last year. So this is going to be a really interesting matchup to see how that one goes. So I really think in that matchup, that could be, that could go, um, you know, Rochester will be looking for revenge. And I think it'll be, it's, it's one of Rochester's biggest games of the year. So we'll see how that one goes. I mean, like that should be a really interesting matchup between the um, two sets of Falcons, the Blue Falcons and the Green Falcons. So that should be really interesting there. Um, week number five, take on Harper Woods, it's a rematch. Um, Groves win Harper Woods last year and won that game. It was a really tight game between those two teams. Um, so that should be, I expect another fun classical game. As, as Coach Corliss mentioned on the podcast, um, you know, get your popcorn ready for that one. I think that'll be a really, really good game between the Falcons and the Pioneers. Um, week number six, um, Groves goes out of league to take on the Lions of South Lion. South Lion last year went two and seven. Um, they should be better this year in the Lakes Valley. Um, so when I look at the Lions, they should be improved. I mean, like, and you know, if, if, South, if the South Lions in the past can't, comes back, you know what I mean? This would be a really competitive game. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Week seven, the Falcons take on the Warriors of A&T. South feels much of a team than they were um, when they won the Division One State Championship. So it should be an interesting matchup there between the Warriors and the um, Falcons. Week eight, they go to Royal Oak to take on the Ravens. Um, you know, when you look at that matchup, it looks like it looks really bad on paper. When you look at it, of course, Royal Oak's in the gold, Groves, of course, is in the white. I mean, it's a really bad mess match on paper, but you know, it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. I mean, we don't know what to expect Royal Oak. And then you have the annual rivalry game. This year be at Beverly Hills between um, Groves and Seahome. Seahome, as I mentioned, got the best of Groves last year twice um 21 14 um and then and then the uh, in the regular season game and then the playoff game 40 40 i mean that was a shootout 40 i think it was 56 49 was that final score um that was just insane i mean like both nights that off both offenses went nuts on the teams with back to defenses so when you look at groves this year outlooking their team they should be pretty good i mean they should be a playoff team this year but there are some concerns with pick at quarterback um you know, if they stay healthy, they should be a team that could maybe have postseason aspirations, maybe having a deep postseason run like they've had in the past. Um, the challenge for Groves this year is can they get the fourth field? That's going to be the biggest challenge for them this year. Obviously, we're going to have to go to D the South. Um, that's not going to be an easy task, but like I said, they got to take it one at a time. And I think, you know, that's going to be the expectation for Groves is can this team get to fourth field and finally break through and get to Ford Field. That's the big question I have with Groves heading into the year is can they finally break through? I mean, that's the big question. Um, let's go now from Groves. Let's go now to Harper Woods, the team that won a Division IV state championship a year ago. Um, you look at that, that team loaded with proven talent. So here's Harper Woods coach Rob Oden at the podium talking about the Pioneers. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rod Oden, head football coach at Harper Woods High School. With me today are three of our senior captains um, to my right and your left. Senior middle linebacker, Matthew McCraw. Senior offensive tackle, defensive tackle, Jay Sean Kennedy. And senior defensive end, offensive lineman, Bryant Weatherspoon. These men represent a 14 member senior class that was all key contributors in last year's state championship run. The 2025 version of the Pioneers will be fast, physical, and athletic. We return about 50% of our roster from last year. Most of that is in the trenches, so that's a good thing for us. Um, 
Great off season this winter and into the summer, these men have worked tirelessly to get better and defend what they rightfully earned last year. We're looking forward to every opportunity on the schedule. Definitely can attest to the fact that the OAA prepares you for anything out there. Our state playoff run was slightly less difficult than our regular season. So we appreciate all you guys. We wish you all the best of luck. And go Pioneers, go OAA. When you look at the Pioneers this year, I mean, I look at the expectations. They do return Nate Washell at quarterback. You've got Kobe Bailey at running back. You've got a lot of proven experience on this team. I even said on the podcast, I think this Harper Woods team could be better than last year's state championship team. So I caught up with the um, coach of the Pioneers, Coach Oden, to talk about the Pioneers. I got the coach of the defending Division IV state champion, Coach Rob Oden here. Coach, um, how was the experience of that, of that win for that, for that win last year for the community last year? It was tremendous. It uh, changed the whole environment and climate of Harper Woods community, especially those that attend the high school. The rest of our school year was exciting, it was fun, it was energetic, it was definitely a blessing. Talk about Nate the Great Washlow here, obviously, I mean, like, it's the first time I've used that word in a long time, but how's Nate been doing this last season? Nate is doing phenomenal. He's taken several steps to advance his game. He will be a full-time starter, you know, he won't split reps like he did last year. He can make all the throws, he's improved some in his uh, ability to run the ball and keep sustaining drives. He's done everything we needed him to do, and he'll be a captain as a junior as well. That schedule is brutal. You look at Redford Union, you look at CC on there. Talk about that schedule. Well, the schedule is set up that way. You know, our goal is to, you know, find out who we are very early on so that it'll pay dividends for us in weeks 9, 10, 11, and so on. So we try to make sure we play some formidable opponents, and this year is no exception. You know, it's a great uh, group of teams that we play, and we're hoping that we can be just a little bit better than them each week. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Our expectation is to get back to the state championship and defend this title by going through uh, winning the OAA White first, securing enough victories and playoff points to host three weeks at home, and make a run kind of like we did last year. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at the Pioneers' road to, D to the D4 state championship, Last year, they went through a very tough OA schedule, playing the likes of Clarkson, Lake Orion, um, and then, uh, and you know, and then of course when they went in that run, they knocked off some really good, formidable opponents in D4, like Crosswell, Lexington. They knocked off Carlton Airport, knocked off Goodrich, and then they knocked off Grand Rapids South Christian. So when you look at the schedule this year for Harper Woods, it is no different. When you look at this, when you look at the early season schedule, they open up the year with we're at home against Redford Union. That's going to be a really interesting match. Redford Union has been a perennial. They've been, they've had some solid years. I mean, they've had some really, really good years. Um, when you look at that, when you look at them, and I think Harper Woods, they could be a really interesting team to really keep an eye on um, in that matchup. Um, week two, they take on Oxford. Um, that's going to be a very interesting matchup going up to Oxford to take on the Wildcats of um, Oxford. Um, going up there week two, always very tricky. Week three, they go to Novi to take on the Shamrocks and Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Another tricky matchup for Harper Woods. That could be the gut check game that people look forward to with the um, Pioneers uh, taking on a very good Novi Detroit Catholic Central team. If they can get that one, you know, that will help big time when it comes to playoff points. Week four, they take on Stony Creek. Um, that's another interesting matchup when you look at that one. Um, obviously, you have defensive coordinator Rick Powell, who's now the new coach at Stony Creek. He was at Lake Orion last year who crapped up a really nice game plan against Harper Woods, um, holding him to six points. Um, weeks, week five, they take on Groves. That could be maybe be one of the biggest games of the year for Harper Woods. Obviously, um, going to Beverly Hills, it's not going to be an easy game for them. Um, week six, they take on A&T, um, which I, that should be an interesting matchup as well. Um, week seven, they take on Rochester, of course, last year. Harper Woods put 56 on Rochester, winning that one 56-26. Um, week 8, they take on Pontiac. Um, you know, I don't know how the scheduling guys gave Pontiac that match against Harper Woods. I'm still trying to figure that one out. And then week 9, they take on um, East English Village Prep, of course, in Detroit. It's a very close um, close distance for, for um, 
Coach O and Harper Woods, obviously. It's going to be very interesting to see how that one goes for Harper Woods. So when I look at the schedule, I mean, like it looks manageable for them. Week, the first three weeks of the year, really daunting task against Redford Union, Oxford, and Novi Detroit Catholic Central. So when you look at the Pioneers this year, a lot of expectations this year as well heading into the year. I also forgot to mention, I do have a podcast with Coach um, Odin, and we talk about the Harper, more in depth, we talk with Harper Woods, obviously. So I do have that podcast that'll be on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. So Harper Woods, the team that's going to be a team to be reckoned with this year. And I expect them to be one of the top teams in the league. I expect me one of the top teams in the white, and I expect me one of the top teams in Division Four this year. So a lot of excitement when you look at Harper Woods heading into the year. So there is a lot of excitement when talking about this football team. So let's go now from Harper Woods. Let's go to the Falcons of Rochester. I mean, like, when you look at Rochester here, this is a team that really – Last year, you don't know what you're going to get with them. I mean, like, last two years ago, they made the playoffs. Um, won their first ever playoff game as a school by knocking out Stony Creek. Um, ran into a very good Adams team. Um, then last season, this team ran into Utica, lost by one point. A um, lot of questions when you look at Rochester hanging in the air. So here's Rochester coach Eric Ver Vernon at the podium. Uh, we'll go next to Rochester High School. Again, my name is Eric Vernon, head football coach here at Rochester High School. One thing I do want to say, and... Uh, I kind of mentioned it a little bit at the start. Obviously, this is uh, a fantastic league. We really want to give players as much credit as we can because they're the ones that put the work in and do the grind and do the daily day-to-day uh, -day activity. But if you really look around this league, you know, a lot of it, too, is defined by how great the coaches are in this league. And I hear horror stories from a lot of other leagues, a lot of other places in the state, and different coaches with a lot of different issues and everything else like that. And obviously, we're very competitive here. But the level of coaching that takes place in the OAA is, is top notch. We got Hall of Famers all over the place. And a lot of the other coaches, uh, if they're not Hall of Famers yet, they certainly coached under Hall of Famers. And it just, again, shows a testament to the programs that are built in this league. And as a coach, you really got to be on your game every single week because the potential for, for a team to to pull an upset or you know do something like that is, is really high because again the level of coaching so thank you to all the coaches for putting in the time and the effort getting the information back to me for this as well um now on, on to the you know to the players on to rochester here um you know i brought with me all seniors here we got a really good senior class coming back um last year we were really young uh the year didn't quite go the way obviously we wanted it to do or wanted it to go um had to play a lot. Of, had to play a lot of young kids, and that's kind of how the season went. It was some of the mistakes that you would expect. But the good news is, coming back this year, um, we got a lot of experience back. A lot of kids hungry. A lot of kids willing to grind this off season. Um, I have next to me right here, uh, senior Jack Lauer. He's running back, linebacker for us. He's an all-region running back for us. Our leading rusher. Um, he's also an all-state wrestler uh, for us. Um, good hard-nosed kid. Uh, we got Zach Davis. Right here, Zach Davis is a linebacker and a tight end for us. Uh, he's our leading tackler, returning back from uh, from last season. Um, he's a good playmaker for us from the tight end position. Um, good lacrosse player, another multi-sport athlete that we have. Uh, we have Adam Glinski, senior over here, offensive line, defensive lineman for us. Um, he's going to be a three-year starter up front, um, and he's just a tough, hard-nosed kid. One of the best kids we have in the weight room. Another multi-sport athlete that wrestles for me. Uh, we got Curtis Adair down at the end over there, senior, uh, quarterback, wide receiver, defensive back. Um, getting another one of those kids that's been got a lot of experience last year, playing a lot of different positions for us. Uh, he's a he's a good playmaker. Uh, ran track again this year. Another multi-sport athlete for us, and looking forward to some good things from him. Uh, and then Brandon Roscoe, uh, he's an offensive lineman for us, returning starter up front. Um, kind of anchors that offensive line where we have four of the five starters coming back. Uh, again, another multi-sport athlete wrestles for me. And that's, you know, the thing with this program, we got a lot of kids who are willing to put in the grind. We encourage and appreciate kids playing multiple sports. I think that helps overall development of the player. And uh, we got a whole roster full of guys that do a lot of different things. And that's, um, again, I think that's, that's great for, for our school, our program, um, and, and especially for these kids. They're ready to go. We're really excited for this upcoming season. Uh, thank you for everybody showing up today, and uh, go Blue. When you look at Rochester, obviously, as I mentioned before the um, presentation here, we look at Rochester, and I think, you know, the history of Rochester, 
I mean, you got to appreciate it, what they've done with the community and all that. Now, I did do a podcast with Coach Eric Vernon. Um, it'll also be on the blog at Saginaw by 4050 at blogspot.com if you wanted more information on Rochester. But I also caught up with an interview with Coach Vernon to talk about the state of the Falcons. I got the coach of the Rochester Falcons, Coach Eric Vernon here. Coach, obviously, um, last year was a rough year, but um, but this year there's a lot of expectation, hope for this Rochester team this year. Yeah, we were we were really young last year, and you made a lot of we made a lot of mistakes you'd expect a young team to make. Turned the ball over a lot, did a lot of things that really obviously didn't help us win. But we get all those kids back. Hopefully, they learn from their experience and we can come in and hopefully find some matchups that work out well for us and, and do well this year. Talk about that schedule. Obviously, we talked on the podcast about the schedule. Big one, week one for you against Frazier. Um, talk about how that schedule is looking for you guys. Yeah, that's, yeah we got to get off. We got to get the ball rolling week one, like you said. And that's something that I mean, we know Frazier is going to always be a tough team. They always have talent. They're really well coached. Um, you know, so we got to make sure that we're we're ready to go. And obviously, week two with the crossover with Adams, uh, that's something we want to really try to invest a lot of time in. And then we get in the league schedule, and it's it's always always tough. So it's a tough schedule. But like we talked about today, every coach kind of said it, it it prepares you. It kind of it allows you. So if we do success and hopefully get in the playoffs, and that'll help us when we get there. What is your expectation this year, coach? Uh, it's, you know, same expectation I'm sure as everyone else. We want to win the league. We want to we want to win our, win our rivalry games. We want to make the playoffs, and we want to get to Ford Field just like everybody else. Thank you really much, Coach. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Rochester has a tradition. You know, they always hold up character, tradition, achievement. You know, and that's always been their hashtag over at Rochester. Um, and I think when you look at that schedule this year for Rochester, they got a lot, their home games this year. They've got like a special theme devoted to each of those games this year, which is very interesting. Um, starting off with Frazier, um, I think it's their Hall of Fame night. Um, when you look at that matchup, you know, Frazier we know is a very tough team. And, you know, last year they knocked off um, Troy Athens 14-6, and then they upset Troy in the final play 20-19. So when you look at that game between Frazier and Rochester, that's a trap game looking looming for, um, for um, you know, for Rochester. I mean, last year... Rochester lost to Utica 22-21 at Swinehart, and that cost them basically. Um, that basically cost them almost. I, I felt a trip to the playoffs when you look at that. When you look at the um, and you look at the Ramblers, same conference they're in the MAC. Um, so it'll be a really interesting matchup week one between the um, Falcons and the Ramblers over at Rochester. Um, week two, this is the Falcon frenzy game um, taking on Adams. I asked myself this, you know, I even asked this on the podcast of Coach Vernon. I mean, why why play your arch rival on this game? I mean, like, you haven't beaten Adams since 1996. I mean, like, and I know the history is there, and I know a lot of a lot of Rochester fans are, are sick and tired of hearing the fact that it's been 1996 since the last time they beat Adams. They had a couple times, a couple chances to do it um, during the COVID year when they had a chance to beat them, but you know, Adams ended up finding ways to win that game. And, you know, when you look at the matchup here with um, Adams, um, the quarterback matchup is going to be really interesting along with Mateo Humbert at running back. So that's going to be a tall order for Rochester taking on an Adams team. You know, they're going to be motivated. We don't know what their mindset is going to be after playing Romeo week one. But, you know, playing a rivalry game, it's at home, it's a Falcon frenzy game. You know, that's going to be a heck of, a, heck of an event, the community event there. Um, hoping the game can be competitive, but we'll see what happens there in that one. But um, we'll see how that one goes. Um, week three, they take on a t at Southfield. Um, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, you know, at Rochester, you know, um, competitive always. They're going to be very competitive in that game, heading down to um, a t to take on um, a um, very taking on an a t team, you know, that lost a lot of talent. But it'll be an interesting matchup, to say the least, there in that one. Uh, week number four, they take on Groves. The rematch of the um, it was a it was a compl- it was a blowout last year in Beverly Hills, um, and that's going to be really interesting to see how that one goes. I just think that it'll be a challenge for sure, and I think this will be really interesting to see how um, Rochester responds in that one. Um, week number five, it's homecoming for them. They take on Oxford. Um, difficult matchup because. Oxford, you know, has a quarterback in, uh, in Jack Hendricks. They have a proven running back in Luke Johnson. I mean, it's going to come down to, I think, is the passing game. Um, 
can Rochester find a way to throw the ball? I mean, that's the big question. I mean, that was their Achilles heel last year was throwing the football. So that's going to be a question mark this year for Rochester, um, particularly not only besides this season, but also in this game against um, Oxford because they're going to have to have balance in this game. Um, then October, I mean, it gets really interesting. I mean, they open up with Stony Creek. Um, that'll be at... Um, that'll be at Rochester, at Stony Creek this year. I mean, like, last year was 35-7, Stony Creek um, laid a whooping on Rochester. It was not a pretty sight, and now you look at Stony Creek, got a new coach in Rick Powell taking over that team. Um, interesting matchup. I mean, you know, it's going to be intense over there at Stony Creek between the um, Falcons and the Cougars. As, as, as I mentioned, with, also with Rochester and Rochester Adams, it's going to also be intense there as well. Week 7, host Harper Woods. Um, this will be a very interesting matchup. Um, I think it's their senior night. Um, so this will be a really interesting matchup between the Pioneers and the Falcons. Um, last year, Harper Woods um, went, destroyed Rochester on, on their home field. I mean, two years ago, Rochester knocked off Harper Woods. So that's going to be interesting there. I mean, I mean, like, especially when you look at that matchup. Week 8, Rochester goes to Hurley to take on Berkeley. Berkeley wearing the all pink uniform, so that should be a really interesting matchup over there at Hurley. Um, Rochester's last few, I mean, a couple years ago, they went into Berkeley and knocked them off. Um, I remember that game really well. And then week nine, they close out the year with them, Wall Lake Northern at Wall Lake. Um, Rochester had no issue with the Knights last year winning on their senior night. Um, it was pretty convincingly. So when you look at Rochester this year, um, a lot to look forward to, a lot of experience on this team. Um, line play would be interesting to see. Quarterback's a big question mark. I mean, like, do they, what do they do with Curtis there? Um, I, that's the big question I have with Rochester. If, um, if some, if the quarterbacks that Rochester develops, you know what I mean? You know, they can move Adair elsewhere, which could be a big deal for them, creates balance for them. But one thing for sure with Rochester is they have got to some, somehow find a way to throw the football. If they don't, they're going to be in for a long year. I mean, if they just run the ball a lot most of the time, it's it's not a recipe for success, and Coach Bernie knows that. So Rochester this year, they could surprise some people, or you know what I mean? I mean, it depends. I mean, like, this is senior heavy, it's an experienced team. So we'll see what happens with Rochester. I mean, this is a team that I think could be really good this year, but also that could be – it could it could go it could go two ways. I mean, but that week one game against Frazier is extremely important for them. If they can win that game, they could turn their fortunes around really quick. So that's my take on Rochester: is can this team find a way to overcome? You know, what I mean, can this team find a way? And I think it could surprise some people. We'll see what happens. So what's going on for Rochester? Let's go to the defending Division One state champion A and T Warriors. Um, new, I mean, like they knocked off Belva last year in the state championship game, 36-32. Then they lose all that talent, and then their co then coach Aaron Marshall leads to go to Birmingham Brother Rice in the offseason. So it's been a tough offseason for a &T. They named them Keith McKenzie, their new head coach. Um, and here he is at the podium talking about the Warriors. Hello. Uh, I hope everybody doing well. My name is uh, Keith McKenzie, the new head coach over at Southfield a and I'm excited uh, to be here in the OAA. Um, I've uh, previously uh, was uh, coaching college football, so I've been in a few of you guys' at schools and uh, evaluated some of you guys as players, but um, I'm so excited about this opportunity I have here. Um, this team uh, just, uh, the team last year won the state championship, and uh, they had a great squad full of seniors. Um, I can't say we have a squad full of seniors right now, so, um, but the one thing I've, I've, I've seen in my short time um, as the head coach is we have a lot of guys that are committed to the program. Um, they are excited, um, they're eager to learn, um, they're eager to get better, and um, it's, it's, it's really exciting for me um, this next uh, chapter in my life. With me right now, I have two uh, of my players, uh, a senior and a rising junior, so I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Kenneth Brooks, Rover, running back. Um, what about this next season, uh, the 24th season? What, what, what to expect from Southfield? 
Um, I'm still trying to figure that out, and we are trying to figure out who we're going to be uh, identity-wise as we go through uh, um, our training, uh, practicing, and things like that. Uh, got hired in April, so um, behind the gun from the start um, as far as off-season conditioning, but uh, we jumped in it full fee uh, two feet in, and uh, those guys responded well. Um, the biggest things that we've been focusing on is the – you know, the basics that you're going to see in football, you know, tackling, blocking, uh, body position, effort. Those are the things that I've been stressing uh, to these guys. You know, uh, any team that I'm coaching, we're going to play with great effort. We're going to be physical and we're going to go out there with attitude of dominance. Um, we're going to go out there and we're going to try to be the big bad wolf out there. So um, are we going to be that this year? We'll see. You know, we'll see. But that's the idea. That's what we're going to preach and we're going to have a great time doing it. So. Um, I just want to say best of luck to everyone, except when you play us. But uh, I'm excited to be in OAA, and uh, good luck. I like the analogy he, Coach McKenzie said about the Warriors. I mean, like being the big bad wolf. Um, when I look at a t this year, there's so many question marks with this team. I mean, like anytime you replace a lot of talent that they did, you know, that's going to be a challenge for them. So. When you look at A&T this year, I mean, like, there is a ton of question marks. So I caught up with Coach McKenzie to talk about the state of the Warriors. I got the new coach of the Warriors, Coach um, Chris McKenzie here. Coach, um, taking over a team that had a lot of success last year. How's the transition been going for you? It's been going well. Um, the unfortunate thing is uh, a lot of the success that uh, this team had, those players are gone. And still got a handful left. We have four starters off that uh, championship team that's coming back to us. Um, but the transition has been well. Um, guys are starting to buy in. You know, you have a new coach, new philosophy, and um, new ideology, you could say. Um, it's, uh, it's always a period of adjustment. But I think those kids have done a really good job of adjusting. Uh, like I said, I think they're hungry. Uh, they want to get better. Some of those guys didn't play last year want to get their feet wet and really get their chance to show what they can do. Talk about your schedule. You open up with Flint Beecher. Um, interesting matchup. Um, how, how's the schedule look for you guys? Man, listen, that was made before I even got into the building, got hired. So um, right now, I don't care who we play. Um, it could be Detroit Lions first game. We're going we're gonna to go out. We're going to be physical. We're going to play hard, and we're going to get after it, And uh, no matter who we see. So uh, Flynn is the first team on the schedule. Uh, you know, don't know much about them. Uh, get a chance to probably watch the film later. But uh, we'll just get ready. We'll go out and play. We'll execute, and uh, we'll let the chips fall where they may. What are your expectations here, Coach? Oh, the expectation is always to go win the championship, state championship, conference championship. That's the expectation every year. It will never change. No matter what the team looked like, who's on the team, the expectations is going to be championship, uh, conference, and state. Thank you really much, when Coach. you look at the Warriors' schedule, I mean, like, this is going to be really interesting. Um, they open up the year week one against Flint Beecher. Um, obviously, when you look at this matchup, I mean, it was a while before a &T was looking for a game. They, were, they had eight games for a long while, and then they finally found Flint Beecher a couple weeks ago. So that's an interesting matchup. Flint Beecher's a team that, you know, been under 500 for a while. I mean, like, they've been um, – but they've been a playoff team, though, despite the um, below 500 record the last few years. So that should be a really interesting matchup. And then week two, you know, Clarkson coming in there. That's going to be interesting. That'll be very, very interesting. Um, last season with that experienced team, a t knocked off Clarkson 2017 in that one. Clarkson's defense played really well in that game, um, limiting Zeke Marshall, but Zeke and the Warriors found a way to win that game. So it's going to be interesting, though, with Clarkson. Um, it's a different Clarkson team. They still had the Bowman Twins back. Um, a t is a completely different team. So we'll see how that one goes there. Week three, they take on Rochester. And, you know, when you look at that matchup, the Falcons are a team that really has, um, you know, they're a team that really, you know, they're, they're hard, grit, they're hard, gritty, fighting. You know, they're, they're a good team. I and mean, Rochester's a team, veteran-heavy team. Um, that should be a really interesting match for a and in that one. Week four, I mean, rivalry game, I get it. Last year, regional final, a and Knocked off West Bloomfield in the final play. Um, West Bloomfield is going to be motivated for this game. I mean, 
as mentioned, it's a completely different team. Um, it's going to be a tall order for A&T taking on a West Bloomfield team. That's going to be just they're they're going to be they're going to be solid. I mean, they're going to be a very good team. So, you know, so A&T is going to have their hands full there in that one. Week four, I say week five, they take on Stony Creek. Um, you know, in that matchup, A&T, you know what I mean? It should be an interesting matchup. Um, battle in the trenches. Um, we'll see how that one goes in that one. Um, week six, they take on Harper Woods. I mean, like, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I mean, like, obviously, Harper Woods is athletic. They have one of the, they're probably going to have one of the best offenses in the um, entire league. I mean, like, it's going to be a very daunting task for a and in that one there. Week seven, they take on Groves. And, you know, when you look at that matchup, it's going to be really interesting. Um, you know, it, it'll be a daunting task for A&T, taking on an experienced Groves team. So we'll see how that one goes there. And then week eight, they take on Ferndale. Um, again, another daunting task for them. I mean, like, obviously Ferndale's got a lot of veteran, heavy experience team. And I think they're going to be a really interesting team to keep an eye on. And then week nine, they take on Detroit Renaissance. Um, last season, A&T knocked off Renaissance at home. Um, now they got to return the favor, go down to Detroit to take on the Phoenix. Um, so that'll be a really interesting matchup for A&T. So when you look at the Warriors this season, there's a lot of questions with A&T. And, you know, and obviously with Coach McKenzie, you know, figuring things out. I mean, heck, we don't even know in the media what to expect with A&T. I mean, like, can this team, are they going to be the same team they were last year? Probably not, but... You know, but a &T, there's a lot of question marks when you look at this Warrior team. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, a &T, you know, could they surprise some people? Yes, but I just don't know if I see it in year one. I'd be really shocked that they did do it in year one. I mean, like, and that would be a credit to the players and also the coaches. Um, but I, I see a long season ahead for a &T heading into the year. Um, and then our last but not least, we got the Cougars of Stony Creek. Um, when you look at the Cougars, um, they got a new coach and Rick Powell taking over, um, but he wasn't at media day this week. I mean, like, which was a surprise. So here is Stony Creek at the podium on media day. My name's Court Harveth. I'm the uh, assistant coach for Stony Creek. Uh, standing beside me here are uh, three of our 20 senior leaders that we have on this team. I'm going to let them introduce themselves first, and then we'll go through the program. Spencer Beckman, O-I-D-L-I-N-E, Asher Lukowski, running back, outside linebacker, senior. Uh, Brandon Novus, uh, senior linebacker. Excellent. So, change is the name of the game for Stony Creek this past year. Um, we're super excited to welcome in Coach Rick Powell uh, as our new head coach. Coach Powell has uh, experience with Anchor Bay, Frazier, and then most recently with these fine gentlemen over here underneath the tutelage of, of Coach Bell as their defensive coordinator. Um, Powell sends his apologies. He is spending the last couple of days with his beautiful wife and daughters uh, as they head up north just to, uh, to experience the last little bit before we get into uh, the grind of the season. So we're excited because Coach Powell brings a new level of excitement and energy for us that I think we've been lacking over the last few years. The players, the coaches, the community itself really can't wait to get this season started. For the team and the individuals up here as well, we're returning seven overarching offensive defensive starters from the 2023 season. Um, last season left a little bit of a sour taste in our mouth, um, reason being really close games, some really strong opponents here, kind of cut that season short for us. Um, but this year, this great group of seniors that we have are leading a really strong group of underclassmen that we have as well with our JV and our freshman ranks. Um, the schedule is not going to be any easier this year um, as we move into the, the white division going against two defending state champions as well as a couple of crossover games against some rivals that we have. So definitely going to be a challenge for us this year. But these individuals and then the off season that we had, the workout program, the agility, everything that these guys have worked for to ensure that we, uh, we get ourselves into the best position possible. And then with Coach Powell's offensive defensive philosophies and this guy's work ethic we're going to be in great shape and we're excited for the season so thank you very much for rochester and then thank you and everybody have a good season when you look at stony creek um there is some question marks heading into the year quarterbacks a big question mark 
So I talked to Coach Powell um, on the podcast. We talked about the state of Stony Creek football heading into the year. Before I let you go, Coach Powell, um, what is the expectations this year at Stony Creek? I mean, like, I know, um, you know, when you look at transition periods, and I know you learned this from, um, you know, and I know you watched the 04 Detroit Pistons with Larry Brown, you know what I mean, when Joe Dumars said there has to be a transition period and it has to happen during the season. So what are you, what is what is that thought process, and then what is your expectations heading into the year? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes back to the whole thing of talking about that that playing with that elite mindset and developing that elite mindset. Um, and really the two things that come to mind for, for me is to, uh, compete and to be consistent. And I think, you know, you could say transition year, you could say like our goal is just to on a daily basis, whether it's practice game training, whatever we just want to compete and we want to compete and be consistent in what we do. Um, so, you know, there's really no peaks and valleys up and downs. We want to go at a steady climb and get 1% better and, and compete at a daily basis and, and really be consistent with what we do while doing that. Obviously we're trying to perform with our elite mindset, um, and trying, to, and trying to go into every single game that, that we can compete, that we're able to uh, to play with these guys and hopefully one day give us a chance to get back in the red. But uh, like I said, for right now, we're just trying to take it day by day, step by step, and uh, focus on being consistent in everything that we do. Thunder Creek Coach Rick Powell here. Um, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Um, obviously, wish you the best of luck this year, and I will see you at Media Day. Hey, now, when you look at the Cougars' schedule, you look at that schedule, and it's brutal. I mean, you look at week one, they – it's, it's kind of like Coach Powell's homecoming, obviously, of course. He used to be at Warren Cousineau. He went to school there. Um, he is a patriot there. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see that Coach Powell um, brings his um, new program to Warren to take on the Patriots of Warren Cousineau week one. Um, so that should be a fun matchup right there. I mean, like, it'll be an interesting matchup to see how that one goes. And then week two, um, it's Coach Powell's former school, um, Lake Orion. And, you know, you look at that matchup, Lake Orion had no issue with Stony Creek last year. They had it, they had it tough, I mean, for about, for, for about a half there, for about almost two and a half, three and a half quarters. I mean, like, but Lake Orion, you know, it'll be a very interesting matchup between the um, Cougars and the Dragons over at Stony Creek. It's also Coach Powell um, taking on Coach Bell, and that's going to be a really, really fun matchup between those two teams. Um, week three, they take on Groves. Um, this is going to be another exciting matchup. Battle in the trenches between um, Spencer Beekman and Avery Gat. Um, that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Week four, they travel to Harper Woods to take on the Pioneers. It's a rematch of a game where um, Stony Creek fell on that one. 20, I think it was 27-21 last year to um, Harper Woods. It was a controversial game in that one there. But um, that should be a really, really interesting matchup between the Cougars and the Pioneers um, week four. Week five, they take on A&T. Um, again, you know, a and a very young team this year, so we'll see what happens in that one. I think that'll be a very interesting matchup to see what the Cougars do in that one. And then the rivalry games. I mean, like, you look at week number six, they take on Rochester. Um, last season, Stony Creek blew out Rochester 35-7. Um, it was not a pretty sight for Rochester in that one. Um, now Stony Creek gets to host Rochester which is going to be a really interesting matchup there. And then week number seven, it's Adams. Um, you know, when you look at that matchup, um, be curious to see how um, Coach Powell defends Zavir in that one with his new team, obviously. When he was with Lake Orion last year, they shut out Adams um, behind a very stout defensive game. Um, so that should be a really interesting matchup there between um, Stony Creek and Adams. Um, week eight, they take on Avondale. This is a big game for the Avondale, obviously. Stony Creek's a D1 opponent. Um, for, for Stony Creek, you know, it's a chance to get themselves some playoff position against a really good athletic opponent, especially against a team that runs a wing T. And then week nine, they take on Ann Arbor Huron. Ann Arbor Huron's a team that's been around 500, um, but they've been a perennial playoff power um, in the SEC. So when you look at Ann Arbor here on. I mean, it'll be interesting to see with them, them having to travel up to Rochester to take on the Cougars. So when you look at Stony Creek, very favorable schedule for the Cougars. And I think when you look at Stony Creek this year, beside the quarterback issue, um, the, the wide receiving issue, defensive secondary, I think Stony Creek could be in line for a nice year if, they, if things go right this year for them. If they develop that balance, I think Stony Creek could surprise some people um, this upcoming season. 
So when you look at the division, um, the white division, of course, I think when you look at the, the projections, I think they're pretty pretty accurate. I think Harper Woods wins this division um, very tight against Groves. I think Harper Woods will go in there to Beverly Hills and knock off Groves. Um, Groves, I had them second um, at 6-3. and three. I, I, It wouldn't surprise me to start off 0-2. Um, so I think that's going to be the key there. Stony Creek, I think they're going to have a bounce back year in the white. I think with Coach Powell there, I think they're going to do just enough to get in the playoffs, I think, at 5-4. and four. Um, Rochester, I just don't know if I see them. There's some games that I think they can win there. I mean, like, it wouldn't surprise if they're a playoff team, but it really wouldn't surprise me if they're not a playoff team. You know, so when you look at Rochester, um, I think it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes with them. And then a and I have them at 1-8, um, at, um, and 0-4. Oh and um, obviously, when you look at the Warriors, um, young team, new system. Um, you know, I apologize for the spelling error there with Southfield, but it'll be all right. Um, but I think it'll be, um, it'll be very interesting to see how um, the Warriors do um, just rebuilding. It's going to be a re full-fledged rebuild over there, A&T. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there in that one. Um, the rankings will be changing, of course, weekly on the blog. Of course, we're going to be filming the, um, the rankings on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Of course, we're going to be um, heading into the um, season. And of course, we're going to be already in the heart of, se of the season after previewing the week one game. So make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. All right, everyone, signing off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. All right, everyone, signing off here. I'm Sammy Tamir here. Take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week. Take care and see you then. God bless all.